What's going on guys? So in today's video, I wanna give you a very detailed step-by-step -step guide on how I would become a pro in 2022. I'm gonna imagine that I have my current skill set. I'm still a professional level footballer, but I just have to start from scratch. This means that I'll have no connections to pro coaches, no old teammates to hit up, no agents that I have on my phone, no highlight film, no CV, nothing. And I'd show you the exact plan that I would do to return to the pro level within the next year or so. So we're gonna be watching Matt Sheldon. He pretty much a player here in the United States. He played the USL championship and he plays with Charleston battery. And if you've ever seen any of his YouTube videos, you know, this man has traveled a lot of places trying to find a professional contract. He even went to Europe for a few and then he came to the U S and then he finally signed professionally. Now he made this video titled, if I were to sign a pro contract in 2022, this is what I would do. And I'm graduating this December uh, with my electrical engineering degree. So I'm done with school 100% and I can go all in when it comes to getting a professional contract. So I'm going to look at what he has to say and you guys can watch it with me so you guys can hear my inputs. So on that note, Let's get straight into the video. Step one, find a semi-pro team. The first thing that crosses my mind is I wanna get back into a team environment. It doesn't need to be professional, I don't care about that. I just wanna be back playing with a team, playing 11 v 11 games, developing under a coach, and in that environment. Here in the United States, I'm looking at the UPSL, the NPSL, and the USL League 2. But also the time of the year is going to affect which teams that I go for. The UPSL, for example, actually has two seasons per calendar year. The first season goes from about March through July, and then the second season goes from September through December. While the NPSL and the USL League 2 just have one season, goes from about March through end of July, maybe early August. So if it's January through July, I'm going to reach out to teams in all three of those leagues. But if it's August through December, I might just be going for UPSL. UPSL teams. To find UPSL teams, all I'm going to do is just go to premier.upsl.com. I'm going to click the teams tab, and then I'm just going to enter in the state that I live in. There's so many UPSL teams out here in the United States, which is fantastic. So I can be a little bit more refined with my search. I don't have to be looking at teams across the country, hopefully. Then all I'm and what I want to add to this is if you're a student in high school, you are able to play on all these teams as well. So let's say you don't think your academy team or your high school team is good enough. You can actually find yourself a UPSL team to be a part of so you don't waste your time on a team that's not good enough. Like when I'm playing with Houston FC, there's high school players that aren't playing on their on their high school team, but are actually training and getting better with the UPSL team that's playing with the pro team. So I really like that advice as well. I'm going to do is just do my research on all these teams that pop up. I'm just going to click on the team logo. I'll go to their website. I'll research the head coach. I'll research their roster and I'll do some digging to see if I can find contact information for anybody within the club. A lot of these teams will have contact forms on their website, ways that you can send in your highlight film, ways that you can even look up open tryout dates. But I'm also going to be looking up the head coaches directly, maybe DMing them on Instagram, looking up an email if I can find one and also seeing if I can connect with them on like LinkedIn. Yeah, so the way I found Houston FC, whenever it came to um, being part of the USO League 2 team, I actually messaged them on Twitter. And it was just a leap of faith type of thing. I just messaged them. I wasn't expecting a response, but they actually responded and they gave me the head coach's phone number. Um, so phone number and email. So that was actually pretty interesting because I didn't expect them to give his information to me so easily. So by all means, don't be afraid to DM these teams on Twitter, Instagram, or what it may be, because sometimes nobody's messaging some of these teams. So your message would pop up right at the top and who knows, they might need you on their squad. Once I got the contact form on their website or once I found an email of a technical director or a head coach or even a LinkedIn profile, then I'm going to send the following message. Hey, name a coach, GM, technical director or whatever. My name is Matt Sheldon. I am a 30 year old right back slash right midfielder and I currently live in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm looking to join a UPSL team for the season. Would it be possible for me to join in on a training session or come out on trial with their team name? Please let me know. Thank you so much for your time. Now, since I don't have a highlight film or a CV, my success rate isn't going to be the best. A lot of times these coaches are gonna take one look at the email and they're either not gonna to reply to it or the first email they reply with is gonna be, yeah, sure, shoot me your highlight video so I can take a look at you. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button down below and I really would enjoy to hear your opinions of this video in the comment section down below. So let's get back into the video. So I know Always, if you can, if you have a highlight video or, or a CV, always attach it to the first message because a lot of times 
Um, I because I have a YouTube channel, I t I try to put myself in the coach's shoes. Whenever I sometimes I open up DMs, and if people don't give out their question or whatever value they wanted to ask in the first message, I'm not gonna sit. I, I don't have time to sit down and reply to everybody saying, "Oh, yes, how are you doing? What's your question?" Like that second layer is a barrier that will help that pushes me to the next person's question just because it's much faster. Now I have to wait for you to respond to me before I can respond back. And you want to make it as easy as possible to whoever you're messaging, especially if they don't know who you are. Oh, this is not the ideal situation, but hopefully I'll have one coach that's desperate in need for players and is going to invite me out without me sending a highlight video or CV. I'm also going to keep track of everything on like a big Google spreadsheet. I'm going to have each team there. I'm going to have their head coach. Okay, so this is very interesting. I've never actually created a spreadsheet that had all of this information. The most that I have done was I had put the names of coaches and their teams and the coaches phone numbers or sometimes emails, but a lot of that stuff changes. Now that the season is ending, coaches are gonna be removed, some coaches are gonna be fired, some coaches are gonna stay. So even though we're gonna, there's gonna be coaches here you email, some of them won't be part of those programs anymore. And that's the, the hardest part because if they get fired, you're just messaging somebody who's no longer part of the team, but we gotta do what we gotta do. So I see what he has here. He even has the assistant coaches emails listed. So. That's something that I'm going to have to follow um, with him. Technical director and GM, if I can find them, all the contact information I found, as well as even like open tryout dates, their interest level and where I've contacted or if I've contacted them yet. When you're doing this and you're sending out tons of different emails to coaches, GMs, different, you know, assistant coaches, whatever, it can get really, really convoluted and you can kind of forget who you've messaged or what they said or their interest level or whatever. So I like to keep a very organized list of all of this just so I don't get confused and send the wrong message to the wrong coach or forget that a coach has invited me into an uh, open tryout or invited me into a training session. And I've already kind of hinted at it, but ideally the best case scenario is if one of these coaches invites me in to train with the team. But like I said, not having highlight video or CV, a lot of coaches might be weary with that. So I'm perfectly fine attending an open trial if need be. I'm not gonna turn my nose up at these open tryouts. I'd probably send out these messages and do this full Google spreadsheet for every single UPSL team within like a two to three hour drive of my home city. I'd then repeat the exact same process for teams in the NPSL and the USL League 2. For NPSL teams, you can go to npsl.com slash teams. And for the USL League 2, you can go to uslleague2.com slash league dash teams. There are fewer NPSL and USL League 2 teams just generally in America versus UPSL teams. So I might even extend like my driving radius out to like four or five hours from my home city. So as he is talking right now how to put this spreadsheet together, even with the UPSL levels and USL too. Um, it sounds easy on the way he's saying it, but this will take a tremendous amount of time, which you must invest. And for somebody who's truly wanting to succeed, I have a strong feeling that this is a very like smart strategy, but just finding these contacts in the first place, it might take you at least you know, a few days or even a week to finally sort up all of this, right? And that's if you really dedicate your time. But like, if you're working, and you're going to score the time, you got to seriously find time to sit down and put these um, teams into this spreadsheet because it will take time because you want to make sure you don't, you don't leave any corners turned, right? Because some teams won't have the head coach's email out there. So you literally have to do more digging, maybe giving calls to the front office and doing whatever you can to get in contact with these coaches. Somebody out there right now who's thinking that's unrealistic or they're looking at their schedule and they're like, no, you know, four or five hour drive is ridiculous. But like that's sometimes what you have to do in order to push up to a higher level. Mm -hmm. Back in 2015, I was training with Sacramento Republic. They're in the USL championship as a professional team. 
but I was just a training player and I would train with them Monday through Friday. And then immediately after training on Friday, I would drive down five to six Ooh. hours from Sacramento, California, okay, that's actually all the way down intense. to Ventura, down near LA. I'd get to the team apartments around like five, six o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes a little bit later. I'd have dinner with the team in those apartments. I'd sleep, spend the night, and then the next evening, we'd play the game down there with the Ventura County Fusion. As soon as the game ended Saturday night, I'm hopping back in my car, and I'm driving the full five, six hours back up to Sacramento. I would get home at like 3 a.m., I'd pass out, I'd sleep pretty much all day Sunday, and then I'd wake up again Monday morning, come back in for training with the Sacramento Republic that Monday morning. It was an Well, I I 100% commend him for doing this because um, the most I've driven to training is like an hour and 30 minutes because I live outskirts of Houston, North Houston, and Houston FC would train in near downtown, right? You pass downtown and you you'll you'll find it right it's 100 one hour and 30 minutes but i'll do that every day so one hour and 30 minutes there one hour and 30 minutes back uh but this wasn't even a professional team and he got an opportunity to train with a professional team so those uh those six hours are definitely worth it right because there's every single time he's on the pitch with the first team he has an opportunity for the coach to say, you know what? I want to sign Matt Sheldon. And at the same time, he's getting a lot of value and experience playing with these pro players. So besides that, like that's extremely hard to do to commit six hours of your day um, to make this travel to train with this team. Hmm absolute grind but i knew that i was going to get the best exposure playing for this usl league 2 team in ventura and i knew that i also was going to develop really good contacts and develop my game by training with this professional team up in sacramento so it's just one of those things you have to realize that as you go higher and higher and there's fewer teams you sometimes need to be willing to make those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I'm gonna do during this time is I'm going to make like a plan of action. I'm gonna have a big calendar and I'm gonna plan out the next month, two months, especially during those off season transition times between one season to the next season. I'm gonna be planning out the four or five open tryouts that I'm going to be attending. Hopefully by sending out all these messages and emails and contacting these UPSL, NPSL, and USL League Two teams, hopefully I've gotten some interest from some coaches. And some coaches have responded, yeah, I'd love to take a look at you, come to this open tryout. And maybe if I'm lucky, they'll even waive that tryout fee for me, or they'll even invite me into like an invite only combine, or maybe just straight into preseason. But regardless, I'm gonna have my, my calendar, and I'm gonna plan out those weekends or weeks or whatever it is, plan Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of people don't like going to uh, a lot of players don't like going to open trials, combines. But honestly, I've paid for like four of them. And I think the ripple effect actually builds up. Right. And you start. I, I don't know. There's something about just consistency that the more you go to, the bigger the ripple effect becomes. It's like other coaches can see your comfortability at these open trials. But if you just do an open trials out of the blue and maybe you're nervous, I feel like coaches can see it. But the more open trials you go to, yes, you may have to spend money here and there if it's not covered, but you become confident because now when you're going to these trials, you're not afraid of, oh, what if I don't make it? You're Instead of you're thinking, cool, if this coach doesn't want me, Maybe the next one will. So you play as as good as you can, and if they don't take you, uh, it's okay. On to the next one. Whenever it is, planning out which open tryouts I'm attending, which invite combines I've been invited to, and what preseason invites I've gotten. Step two, compile a highlight video as quickly as possible. By now, I've made one of these semi-professional teams either through an open tryout, an invite-only combine, or just a preseason invite or an invite into training. I've made the team, and now it's all about performing. Now my primary goal is to get into like 10, 10 plus games throughout the season, and then get like 20 to 30 high quality highlights from those games that I play in. Most UPSL, NPSL, and USL League Two teams will record their games the quality and the professionalism of their broadcasting is gonna vary a ton, but most teams. Yeah, one thing, if you don't have a highlight video, I don't know what you're doing, right? I don't care if you need to jug, do dribbling drills and have somebody record you. You need to have some physical evidence that you can actually do something, right? Because if you don't have a highlight video, man, I don't know what to tell you. 
It's like I'm trying to sell you this, you know, Gatorade, zero Gatorade, and you can't even see it. And I'm just telling you, oh, I have this zero Gatorade. It tastes better than regular Gatorade. So pay me, and I promise you you're going to get what you want. It doesn't work like that, right? I'm a, I'm a player. I think I can play professionally. I think I can be a part of your team. What can I show you that will make you want to invest in me, right? Players need to start thinking that way and stop thinking so selfishly. Like, you know, look at the coach's perspective. A lot of times people don't even get responses. It's not because they don't care about you. It's not because you're not good enough. It's just they didn't see anything. Maybe you didn't have a highlight video. So be careful how you approach that as well. And if you can get a highlight video, it's golden, right? If you talk to any agents, their players must have highlight videos. Otherwise, even then, it's harder for them to vouch for you. Will record their games. You might have a USL League Two team that's extremely professional and has a full broadcasting team with professional cameras everywhere and announcers. While on the other hand, you might have a, a smaller UPSL team that just does a camcorder in the stands or a VO cam. Oh yeah, we hate honest, those when cameras. I'm selecting teams when I'm looking for which team I'm actually going to come into preseason with or even sign with. That's mm. going to be a huge determining factor about which team I end up playing for. And hopefully, since I was so thorough with my research during the offseason and sent so many emails and contacted so many coaches and attended so many open tryouts and just did all the behind the scenes work, hopefully I'll be able to choose. I'll have multiple teams to choose from and I can base my decision off of which team feels the most professional and is gonna help me create that best highlight video. It honestly might sound kind of shallow for me to say that where that's one of my main focus points that I'm looking for. And of course, I'm still looking to develop as a player and I'm looking to be on a good team. But that is the thing that I need from this year in the semi-pro level. My main goal is to come down here for one season, make a good highlight video, professional looking highlight video and push on. And I know. Yeah. And things like this, you don't tell other players on your team. You don't tell the coach yourself because there may be times where you need to be a little bit selfish because you can so that you can show other coaches that, hey, this is my potential. Maybe you don't do it every time, but in this case, you're trying to create highlight reels that make you stand out. So sometimes you may have to be a little bit more selfish because instead of giving that ball, maybe if you take it yourself and get the goal, you on video look really good and you'll raise your chances of a coach inviting you. And so I 100% agree with that. Um, just be about as smart because at the same time, I hate losing, right? Pretty sure you don't want to lose either. So do it in a way where you can still benefit and your team can as well. I know that a professional looking highlight video from a professional broadcast with announcers is going to look that much better to pro teams or even other semi-pro teams than a single camcorder zoomed out on a tripod. Both can still work, but I know which one's gonna help me more. Step three, create the highlight video and CV. At yep. this stage now, hopefully I've performed for my semi-professional team. I've played an entire season, I've played in 10 plus games, and I have 20 to 30 highlights from my season. This is the stage where I'm gonna be spending even more time probably on my computer, preparing everything, getting everything sorted before I push up to the pro level than I am. And if you don't know how to create a highlight video, I actually have a video created for you guys. Um, it's with Adobe Premiere, a very powerful software. Uh, anybody can get a trial with it. So you can you get this free trial and um, soon we're gonna, you know, I'll be able to do highlight videos for you guys. I have, you know, something coming up for you guys to help you guys progress your game. But if you are ready and you, re you don't know how to edit your highlight video, I have a source uploaded already. Um, if you just type in how to create a highlight video, Jodobini TV, and you'll find it. it's like a six minute video. It's very simple, but very effective for your uh, highlight creation. Take, take advantage of it. I'm even on the field training. First things first, I'm creating my highlight video. If I have zero skills, I've never edited anything before, I don't know how to use iMovie, then I'm for sure gonna pay a professional company to make this highlight video for me. It's actually pretty cheap. You can find these companies from like 100 to probably like 300 bucks or so. Yeah, if you're broke, look at my video. It'll cost you zero dollars. However, if I am good with iMovie, good at making my own stuff, then I will create my own highlight video. All by myself sum up you should have an intro page that shows who you are your stats your bio stuff like that mm -hmm. the video should be four to six minutes long and put all of your best clips at the very beginning one yeah important fact do not make a highlight video that's 15 minutes 20 minutes long because 
No coach is going to sit there and watch a 20 minute video from a stranger, let alone when you watch YouTube videos, how often do you watch videos that are over five minutes from people you aren't subscribed to? It's very rare, but when somebody, so keep that same mindset when you create a highlight video, you want to keep it, you know, short, concise and sweet, you know, leave a little aftertaste, the coach wanting to see more. That's what you want to do. Once that's created, I'm then gonna create my CV. Your CV is pretty much just your resume as a footballer. Yes. And since I have to start from scratch, my CV is going to be very short. Once again, I have a full video on how to make a CV. These are relatively straightforward, but I will link it in the description if you wanna check that out. Step four, compile a contact list of professional teams and coaches. I'm starting a new spreadsheet now, this time for professional teams and professional. Okay, so, so far in this video, this is where I'm at right now, right? Everything he said so far, I've already done. I have my highlight video. I have my CV. Honestly, I might redo my highlight video just to keep it fresh for coaches, but I have my highlight video. I have my CV. And this spreadsheet now is something that I need to do. So this is exactly where I'm at. And I'm so glad that Matt made this video because I was trying to think of ways on my own on how I should approach this. But this is perfect, right? Creating a spreadsheet right now when um, you're trying to move forward. Professional coaches, I love a good spreadsheet. It's kind of nerdy, mm -hmm. but it's so, so important to keep everything organized. Smart idea, on top very smart. I'm now gonna do the same thing that I did with semi-professional teams and coaches, but this time at the professional level. I'll be looking at NISA, USL League One, USL Championship, and MLS Next Pro Team. Yes, sir. For NISA, I'll head to nisaofficial.com, and you can see there's like 14 teams at the top. Those are the 14 teams in the NISA, and by clicking on those, you will go to their individual websites. Once again, on their websites, you'll be able to find who the head coach is, who the assistant coaches are, maybe who the technical director of the club is, maybe even general manager, as well as open tryout dates, sometimes a contact form, and maybe even a place where you can submit your highlight video for the team to take a look at. A lot of times that contact form is just a general email that goes to an intern in the front office. Yeah, don't do not do the contact form. It's pretty much useless. You have a better chance if you can call them up front and ask for an email because that one, you know, a lot of people's requests, oh, I'm a good player. Though it, they're gonna ignore you because those people who receive those messages don't do anything with the head coaches, right? The only thing they do is, you know, problems with tickets, refunds, things like that. They don't have no access to a lot of these coaches. This and not really directly to the head coach, but you can still try it out and send out an email. You never know. But the best way, honestly, is to look up the head coach, find their mm -hmm. name, and then to find them on LinkedIn or find their email address somewhere out there on the internet. Yeah, so pro tip, what I do to find emails, there's other websites online that you can find the general email of e any website, right? Because every business has a specific thing they follow, right? Most websites are like first.lastname at whateverwebsite.com. Cool. If you wanted to email Houston Dynamo's head coach, you got to understand the email the tech guys give these people all follow a specific structure. So if you can find at least one coach's email, if it's coach um, Josh Roberts and his email is j.roberts at houstondynamo.com, what do you think the head coach's you know, email is gonna be? It's gonna be very similar. And you know, nine out of 10 times it works for me. But some coaches know that people like me know how to do this method. So they put block on their email where once they've sent you an email, then they can be re receive emails from you, which kind of sucks sometimes because that means there's no way you can contact that coach himself through that email. So you have to contact the assistant coaches and some of those assistant coaches have their email open and hopefully they can forward that email to the head coach. Internet. Professional teams and professional coaches in general are much harder to contact and much mm -hmm. harder to find online than with semi-professional teams just because already they get bombarded with so many emails from players and agents and teams. So they're very selective with reading emails. But again, all it takes is, is one coach to take a chance on you. And when I do reach out to these coaches, this is the email that I usually write. Hey, name of coach. My name is Matt Sheldon. I'm a 30 year old right back slash right midfielder who last played for my previous semi-pro team. And I'm looking to play at the professional 
professional level. Last season, I then I would list out some stats and accolades from the previous season, and I have attached my highlight video and CV to this email. I'm looking for an opportunity with the team name. Please let me know if you're interested in talking further. Once I send off that email, I'd update my spreadsheet so I keep everything organized, and I would just keep keep on rinsing and repeating. Once I go through all the teams in the NISA, I'm doing the same exact thing for MLS Next Pro clubs, for USL Championship clubs, and for USL League One clubs. For MLS Next Pro teams, you can head to mlsnextpro.com slash clubs. For USL League One clubs, you can go to uslleague1.com slash league dash teams. And for USL Championship teams, you can head to uslchampionship.com slash league dash teams. If you're doing this correctly and you're researching every single team, every single coach, every single assistant coach, the goalkeeper coach, the technical director, the GM, is gonna take hours and hours and hours. And you're really only gonna find contact information for like a quarter, a third of the teams out there. But again, we really are just taking shots in the dark. And the more shots you take in the dark, the more likely yes, one of them sir. is gonna hit. I'm also going to heavily con You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. How many teams have I not emailed and who knows if I would have emailed some teams, I could have gotten a contract from them. So I like this approach. I'm definitely coming after all those coaches with these um, whatever methods that I can. Consider attending open tryouts for these professional teams. But I'm going to be very smart about the clubs that I do it for. If I'm taking a look in the mirror in this example, I'm looking at myself and I'm seeing a talented professional level player who's only had one season at the semi-professional level. I know that I'm not the hottest commodity on the market right now. If I know I have the time and the money this off season to go to four or five open tryouts, I'm not gonna be going to the number one ranked USL championship team that's killing it with the biggest budget in the entire league. And it's probably gonna re-sign 90%, 80% of their team for next year. Most likely they're not looking to bring anybody in from that open tryout. They might not even be having open tryouts. The first teams that I'm looking to pay for an open tryout for are teams that I've gotten in contact with and have shown me a little bit of interest. If I've sent an email or a DM on LinkedIn or whatever to a NISA coach and that coach replies and says, yeah, Matt, I, I like your highlight video. You look good. I'd love to take another look at you. Then that would be a team I would 100% consider going to an open trial. And hopefully if they're very serious in me, they'll even waive the fee or they'll invite me into an invite only combine or tryout so there's no payment at all but regardless yes. that is a team that i would really consider traveling to and paying for an open tryout the next teams that i would highly consider are expansion teams teams that are just coming into the league just getting promoted up to the professional level and have zero players signed if you would i agree with this one because earlier this year i got invited to um an mls next pro team combine invite only but it was a brand new team so they really didn't have any body officially signed yet but in the end they only ended up signing um i believe it was two players and they were homegrown players but they already had players that they were going to sign so they weren't really trying out but they already knew they were going to sign them but um the team roster currently like 14 players and the rest are like academy players that they're not paying but i wonder what would happen if they had the budget to pay for 26 full professional players what opportunities would I had if they had that? But we keep going. Pretend we're those open tryouts. They could be looking to fill five, six, seven spots on the roster just from that tryout. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm looking at bottom of the table clubs, especially NISA clubs or USL League One clubs, more independent clubs. So hopefully in this off season period, I will have my four or five open tryouts booked up. Hopefully I might get one or two waived from the coach. I might even have an invite only combine that I'm attending, but I'll have my calendar booked up before the start of the next season. And finally, I'm looking at these open trials the same exact way as I look at sending out cold emails. Most likely nothing will come of it, but it's mm -hmm. not gonna hurt. And it's better than just sitting on the couch doing nothing. You lose 100% of the shots you don't pro take. Contract is really gonna be step number five. Step number five, compile a list of agents. Agents can be a huge, huge help in bridging that gap between the semi-professional level. But they also could be a waste of time. On the professional level. An agent's entire job is building relationship and building connections at the professional level. And usually all it takes is one good recommendation from them and then you're in with a team on trial. But what most people don't understand, in order to get that good recommendation from the agent, you need to build their trust and get them to believe that you can be a professional footballer. To research and you need a highlight video, especially if they don't know who you are, because nobody's going to vouch for somebody they cannot see. If I'm an agent, 
and this is the Gatorade you're providing and I'm trying to market it to people and I haven't tried it. I haven't seen it and I'm supposed to make companies accept it. Sounds crazy, right? Because my reputation is going to be ruined because if the product finally shows up and it's trash, guess who looks bad? Not the, not your product, but I do because I recommended it. So as we said it before, make sure you have a highlight video. Agencies, you can use Google, Instagram, LinkedIn, and literally just type in football agent USA. However, my favorite way is to go to transfermark. But since I already have an agent, I'm gonna skip over it, but you guys can watch it. Uh, contacting agencies, I did the same thing. Uh, but the way I contacted the agency, I did it through Instagram and I messaged different coaches, uh, different agents. I even found some agents online. And usually I like a going with agents that player that I've known that play professionally that are with, I like going after those agencies because I trust them more because I have teammates who trust them. Most of the random stranger agents, I don't know who's a scammer or not. So I try to lean towards people that I know and trust in their judgment. And um, if they're producing results, okay, I'll email that agency. That's why I'm with A5 Sports Agency because I know several players that are with them. And I was like, you know what? That's probably a, an agency that I wanna pursue. Actually going to break into. I'd also highly, highly recommend looking into teams and leagues that operate in that in-between stage of like semi-pro football and professional football. Mm -hmm. On these teams, you'll have some players that are on fully professional contracts and then you'll have others that are not. Most countries are gonna have teams and leagues that look like this, but for example, you can look at the New Zealand National League in the first tier of New Zealand, the National Premier Leagues in the second and third tier of Australia, the Regional Liga in the fourth tier of Germany, or like the I'm going to say this wrong, the Kokkonen, Kokkonen, Kok, I don't know how to say it, but in the third tier of Finland. The same exact Kokkonen. process that Kokkonen. you do for agents in America, you do the same exact thing for those teams over abroad. You look at those teams that play in those leagues, hopefully you can find some agents that operate for those players in those leagues, hit them up, shoot them an email, and see if they can do anything for you. I think the hardest jump, obviously, in football is that jump from semi-pro football to fully professional football because yes. there's this huge bottleneck of thousands and thousands of thought. But with the most high, it's 100% possible. Millions of semi-professional level players bottlenecked into going into such a few amount of professional teams. So I think going abroad into those gray area zones where it's kind of a semi-pro team, but you're getting paid, you're getting a fully pro contract, but the whole team's not really fully pro. I think that's a great area to go to, gain experience, build up your resume, and then try to come back into America and push up to the pro level or push up to a fully pro level elsewhere. And finally, step six, rinse, rinse and, repeat. and repeat. Usually this process isn't just like one week that you grind it out, finish, and then you just see what happens. Usually you have to stay very active and keep on researching, researching, researching for the entirety of off season or the entirety of your full free agency spell. So anyway. Yeah, so it's like a lot of people want to know how to go professional, but they don't know how much work it comes in, right? I'm at the end of my college career. I'm like, you know, now I'm going to have time, right? More time. I'm done with school. I don't have to do homework. I don't do have to do online schooling. So I'm, you know, once you f you're out of school as a U.S. you know student, it's time to be laser focused, right? Either you go laser focused into professional soccer, or you're laser focused into your degree because you know the what all the f when you follow your passion, money will come regardless. I'm getting my electrical engineering degree because I was following soccer, right? I went to a college, I was playing my game. End result is. You know, I played Division One. I, I got that experience. I've grown way past that level. Two, I'm getting a degree that can be used in any country. And on top of it, I got it from the United States because a lot of it are on softwares. Even if I went to China or a different country, I can just put the software in a different language and I can still get work done. I have that, right? Benefits, a lot of benefits. And as I continue going in the soccer world, I don't know what's, what doors are going to be opening, even with my YouTube stuff, right? So we're almost there, right? So I appreciate Matt Sheldon's views. And if you have your thoughts on what you think I should do, add to my journey that you maybe did that I don't know of, add in the comment section down below. And I appreciate you. And I'm not that, nope. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Jadal Min TV is out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out any of these other ones that I have shown you. And see you guys over there.